What's your dodged a bullet story? Me and my girlfriend at the time were traveling from New Zealand to my family back home in Sweden. We both decided to spend a bit more money to fly back, to NZ, through Paris instead of Amsterdam, just because we wanted to see the Eiffel Tower. It cost us maybe an extra $50 and we got to see it on the landing and then take off, but never actually set foot in Paris proper because we were poor students. When we landed in Auckland, New Zealand, jetlage to shit, we turn on our phones and notice that we have about 50 missed calls from our travel agent, which was odd. When we call her, she sounds super relieved and out of breath. She tells us the flight she originally suggested to us, the one from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, was shot down over Ukraine. My brain couldn't process that information at the time, but once I woke up the next day it hit me like a ton of bricks. $50 made the difference between seeing the big steel thingy that has so many photos of it and bring sent to Sweden in body bags piece by piece. Sometimes the absurdity of my existence comes over me, and this story always gives me goosebumps. One hell of a story to tell over beers, though. Edit, clarification for some confused folks. We were traveling to Sweden for midsummer, sans sacrifices, so our itinerary was Auckland a lot of stops Sweden, and on the way back we decided to go see the Eiffel Tower, so Sweden Paris a lot of stops Auckland. When I was a dumb young woman I lived in St. Thomas Virgin Islands. I worked in an area that could be very sketchy after dark. One night after work I got really drunk. I stumbled into a taxi to head home. So drunk I'm not even sure how I gave him my address. When we arrived I started digging in my pocket for cash to pay the taxi driver and he reached over and said no, no baby. I'm not a taxi. I just wanted to make sure you got home okay. Apparently I had just jumped into a random car. I will be forever grateful to this stranger and much more careful in my after work decisions. Had gallstones and the doctor gave me a choice between surgery to remove the gallbladder or antibiotics. I choose the surgery, which is very unlike me. When they started the surgery they found out the gallbladder had burst and the stones were in my body cavity. What was supposed to be a short procedure through the belly button turned into a 10 incision to remove the stones. I was supposed to leave the hospital that day, but it turned into a week. However, if I chose antibiotics and went home with a burst gallbladder, I probably would have died of sepsis. I stayed out of the house overnight while in high school. My dad was pissed off and told me that I better be home that night. I didn't listen and instead stayed at a friend's house with my girlfriend. At around 2 am a kid from high school drove a Denali into my house. It ran directly into my room and destroyed my room, bed, and anything else around. He was estimated to be going around 60 miles per hour. My dad is blind and thought that I may have been in the room. He was searching for me frantically my mother said. I remember getting a ton of phone calls from home knowing that I was going to get into trouble for staying out against my parents wished. The next day when my GF dropped me off at home, I found a massive wood board and tarp covering my room. I would definitely not be here today if I had stayed home that night. Best case scenario I'd be a paraplegic. I guess sometimes it does pay to not listen to your parents. When I was 10, I had a friend who had a boys and girls club adult mentor. My friend invited me to come meet him, and I was immediately creeped out. The way the dude smiled at me still gives me nightmares. Two days later, a local news story identified him as a child molester, and he had been molesting my friend for two years at that point. I will always trust my gut when it says get the f out of here. I'd planned on doing some grocery shopping one afternoon after running other errands in the morning. By the time I got done with my morning errands, the weather looked quite gloomy so I decided to leave the groceries for another day. Just as I got home I got frantic texts from a friend of mine asking if I'm okay and to respond immediately. Apparently around the time I decided last minute to forego shopping, someone opened fire at that exact grocery store I planned on going to. If I remember correctly, 
Fortunately nobody got hurt and the shooter got apprehended quite quickly. I stopped at a mall for lunch. Right after I left the parking lot there was a mass shooting. I heard about it on the radio. Edit, it was at the Clackamas Town Center Mall. Partying in Mexico Dance Club, Tijuana. I went to bathroom, on the way there was a group of people smoking pot, they offered, so I took a hit. I proceeded to go into the bathroom and pee. When I came out of bathroom, the group of people smoking pot were being arrested by Federalis, Mexico police. I just kept on walking. Mexico jail is the last place I would want to be. I was dating a girl for a while, and despite living and working on the opposite side of town, she'd always be near this one neighborhood coffee shop that I frequented, so I'd randomly run into her there and ask what brought her to that neck of the woods. She's usually reply grabbing some coffee or I had a hunch you'd be here and wanted to say hi. One day she up and moves out of the state with zero warning, and tells me that we aren't dating anymore. I was confused, but it was casual so while it sucked I just thought oh she probably had some family emergency or something and didn't want to tell me. A few weeks later on her snapchat I see that she's just making absolute stacks in San Diego, and is always wearing the same uniform in these pictures. I was a bit confused but didn't think much of it. I started dating this other chick who frequented the aforementioned coffee shop, and after a month or two of dating, the first chick comes back and starts hanging out with her a bunch around the same neighborhood the coffee shop was in. A week later, both of them are moving to San Diego, and want me to come with them, live with them, and work where they work. Something just felt extremely fishy, so I said no, and off they went. Eventually a picture got posted with both of them in it, in front of a very strange but very instantly familiar building. The HQ of the Church of Scientology. The reason the original chick was always in that neighborhood is because Kitty Corner from the coffee shop was the local chapter of the Church of Scientology. She got pretty ingrained in the church, and moved to San Diego to work for them, then came back to recruit gullible people to come back with her. And that's the story of how I lost two girlfriends to the Church of Scientology, and was none the wiser. Definitely glad I dodged that bullet. Making out with my girlfriend at the time. She was on top of me and leaned in and whispered that she wanted to have sex. I told her I didn't have any condoms and that we'd have to go get some, but she got frustrated and said that we could anyways, but eventually said never mind. Next day I'm at work and she pops in to apologize. I tell her it's not a big deal and that I'll see her after work only for her to say, no no, I shouldn't have put pressure on you and acted like that. I need you to know to have hepatitis C so we need to be careful. Big bullet dodged. We broke up a couple weeks later after even more shit from her past that she had came out into the open. I was on my way to Taco Bell in the back of a friend's small truck. The cab was full so I was in the bed. We passed by my apartment on the way and I chose to have him drop me off, it was a bit chilly in the open air back there. By the time I got into my apartment I had a snapchat from the driver. It was a picture of his totaled truck. While he was stopped at an intersection, a drunk driver approached from the opposite direction going 100 plus. The driver clipped a bus causing an abrupt stop and his whole engine to rip out of his car, fly through the intersection and into my friend's truck where I had been riding, on seat belted moments before. None of my friends were injured. I think both the people in the other car died. Edit to the dozens of people saying that my friends were only involved in the accident because of the deviation to drop me off, you are not wrong. But it still feels like I dodged bullet. Furthermore the route from point A to point Taco Bell went directly past my apartment on a low speed residential street. The time it took for me to hop out of the back as they drove by added maybe 30 seconds to their journey. In a small, rural college town at night this may have made enough of a difference. But if we had been there earlier, maybe we would have been turning into the intersection and I'd have been broadsided by the flying engine instead of it hitting my friend's car head on. Who knows. I'm just happy to be alive and excited to see what today holds.